Welcome to another episode of the We Have a Meeting podcast. Today we've got an expert in all things personal branding, the director of Image Consulting, a renowned platform for unleashing the potential of your personal brand. Not only is she a sought after speaker and consultant, but she's also the author of ICU, a guide that distills her expertise into actionable strategies and helps breathe life into even the most tired brands. Today, we'll uncover insights from her book and tap into her wisdom on how to navigate the intricate nuances of personal branding in today's fast paced world. Our guest today is Sheila Anderson. Sheila, how are you? I'm wonderful. Thanks for having me, Zach and Jack. Happy to be with you. Wonderful, wonderful. We're, we're very excited. So we always start these podcasts off the same way. Who are you and what problem do you solve? Oh, oh, like just hit it right out of the park right at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> well, like you said, my name is Sheila Anderson. And for me, everything is about the visual elements of, of a person, how they represent themselves, their personal brand, their signature style, um, the elements that they have online. So I work with entrepreneurs, keynote speakers, and a lot of people in the creative industry to bring forward those visual elements of their personal brand. Again, it could be their signature style, creating a look for them personally, um, looking at their visual elements that they use online, um, their websites, their memes that they're using on social media, and maybe their headshots, um, and then work with their photographer if they need personal branding photos. So for me, I am just, um, that's what I'm all about. And so I also have a book, and you talked about that, ICU, The Comprehensive Guide to Breathing Life Back into Your Personal Brand. And I was visiting with Jack a little bit earlier that I am in the process of writing my second book. I have the outline completed and I hopefully will launch that in early 2024. Wow. So a, a few different things to, to unpack there, but I suppose I, I, personal branding, if I'm someone in need of it, I may not know directly that that's the solution. Oh, it's, it's personal branding. That's my problem. So w what do the symptoms of having issues with your personal brand feel like? How would I know that I was having issues there? Yeah, so the good news is, or, you know, the good news is we all have a personal brand, right? And then the bad news is we all have a personal brand. So there's, um, it's about being intentional with who you are and not letting others define you. So defining yourself before others define you. Um, and some of the, some of the things that maybe are triggers on, hey, I need to maybe do some more with my personal branding is, you're not getting the fees maybe that you want. So if you are, if you have a business or if you sell a product or a service, maybe the fees, you wanna command higher fees. So that's a that's a, a point where you maybe wanna elevate your personal brand. If you're just starting out in business or starting your own business and you need to, right, be seen, um, is the, whole thing with personal branding is to remain top of mind to be top of mind and so people need to know you before they need you um, so if you're just starting a business personal branding is one of the best ways to get your name out there and your thought leadership is a big part of that um, so those are kind of the two main um, points if you're not getting the fees or that you want or, or maybe even clients you can command a uh, uh, maybe a higher level client that you want. Um, you just need to up level your personal brand. And a lot of people think that, you know, it, it doesn't matter. And I just tell them that you're probably leaving money on the table with how you're showing up. Mm. So would you say that everybody needs a personal brand, Sheila? Yes. <laughs> yeah, the short answer, yes. Um, and again, I said that everybody, you already have one. And it's up to you to own that and to manage it. Um, and one of the things I think people think that you just, you can start, a, you build your personal brand in like six weeks and then it's done. I put it on the shelf and I, it's over and it's not. Um, you almost have to think of it like a little bit in the way of project management. So what can you do on a daily basis to help build your personal brand? Maybe you can do um, an article once a week on LinkedIn, or maybe you do a blog, or maybe you're a guest on a podcast, which is a beautiful way to, to build your personal brand, or you start a podcast like you, you all did. So um, there's just a lot of different ways that um, 
personal branding can help a business. And um, again, everybody already has one and it's up to you to own that, define that and refine it and, and keep it growing. And again, it's not just a one and done, you do it in six weeks and it's done. It's, it usually takes a good two years for you to get noticed. Mm. So, so like it, a long time, but that's yeah. <laughs> and don't get it, scared of that, right? Just keep going. <laughs> it'll be enough to put a lot of people off, Sheila. Um, <laughs> it, it does feel like the last few years, the, the more and more time I spend on LinkedIn, obviously you're an expert and you've been in the space a long time, but it feels like such a modern thing, like your personal brand. Really, we break that down. It's like, what what do people think about you? But why why is it, let's say the last five, 10 years, why is it more important now than ever before? Well, so many more people, again, we have a lot of more entrepreneurs or solopreneurs. We have a lot more coaches and consultants, especially that have come out of the pandemic that are done with corporate world, right? They wanna have their own business, do their own thing. And so personal branding has become such a marketing tool, an asset, right? I always say that you are your most important and most valuable asset is you. And so make sure that you're building that up. Um, but I think it's that the evolution of um, people wanting to do their own thing. But one thing as well is that a lot of corporations, um, we, you know, we know, right, in the sales and marketing industry that we do business with people and not companies. And so as a, as a large company or a medium sized company and you have your staff or your employees and even your executive team, you want them to build out their personal brand because that only up levels that corporate brand as well. And so a lot of corporations are a little bit afraid of that because what if I have um, a, a couple key employees that are out there just, you know, out there speaking and having podcasts and doing all this stuff and it feels like maybe it's not as connected to what they do in the corporate, you know, for their job at, at that business. But it's really is elevating that corporate brand because you look at there and you go, you know what, they have a lot of thought leaders and a lot of brilliant people at that company. Um, and they may be able to connect with that um, target audience better than that company can. So I think there's just a lot of different um, different things happening in that personal branding space. It's become such a normal thing now. It's not, you know, like in 1997, I think it was that Tom Peters wrote that article and I think it was Fast Company called The Brand Called You. And that's really kind of when it people were going, wait, what? We have to start thinking of ourselves as a brand? I thought that was just for companies. And then with the you know, evolution of social media, then it really became a big deal. So that really started taking off when social media started hitting. So if, if I was, a, you mentioned about solopreneurs then, which seem to be coming out more and more and more voices in the space and sometimes more voices in very, very saturated markets. So if I was a solopreneur and I'm looking to almost do some homework on what can I offer as my personal brand, should they be looking at, at, at values, at strengths, at things they do on the weekend, at the aesthetic look? Like what's the homework they should be doing to even make a start on this stuff? Yeah, so this is where I tell people to start. And it's just kind of similar to what you do in corporate branding as well, which I have 30 plus years of background in that as well. but. If I were to ask five of your closest friends what one word comes to mind when they think of you, what would that be? What would you want it to be? And if I was to ask, you know, people that I just, you know, you just meet today or that are newer to your group of friends or network, that same question, what would you want them to say? And what are those words you never want used to describe you? And if you're like most people, you probably haven't given it that much thought. And that's where you can start building your personal brand is create that list of words, right? Three to five words that you want to own in the minds of others when they think of you. And sometimes it's easier for us to start with, what are those words I never want associated with me? And so, for example, if your word is um, detailed, 
we'll just take that word for now. But everything then about you has to come back to that word. So your look has to look detailed, right? The communication that you do, your emails, how you're speaking has to be detailed. Your marketing pieces have to be detailed. Your website has to be detailed. So you think about your when you're kind of coming up with those words, that's that brand personality, and, it, and it's your personality as well. Uh, another good thing to do is, um, you know, businesses have their core values, but what are your personal core values? Um, that can kind of help you figure out how you want to come across. Um, you know, again, so that personal brand, and once you kind of come up with those words, then how does that show up in how you look, your image, how is that showing up in all of your business um, touch points, how is it showing up in how you communicate, um, and then how is it showing up in that interaction with people, that relationship, um, as you're building relationships. Is that word detailed coming out? Is that word charisma coming out? Is that word um, whatever it is? Everything just kind of, that's kind of that solid, you know, foundation for you is having that word and then what does that if you think about what does that look like then i like to um i like to think that the um it's interesting you, you say like what five words would your friend describe you as and what five words i think if you asked my friends what five words they describe me as i think they would be different to the way that i view myself so and i think this is something that i see as in, in personal branding go go wrong it's like we all have to be if we're if we're being truthful and genuine we have to be our authentic self but we all but what is an authentic self and we have images of this is how i want to be portrayed i want to get more money for this deep down it might be somebody suffering with imposter syndrome or deep down that they, they put on a facade so how genuine do you need to be how much of your authentic self do you need to be and should you not just be the, the version that is going to, if you are a, a, an entrepreneur, the, the version that might earn the most money, if that makes sense? Yeah, it does. So uh, always be yourself, right? Always be you, be 100% you. And I think when you do that exercise, people kind of, a lot of times those words that maybe people use to describe you, I have, like, you write down the words that you want. And then you kind of look at what the words they um they're using to describe you. And maybe there's some similarities, but if there's a total disconnect between those words, then you have to think about, well, okay, I know how I wanna come across. This is how I wanna come across. Apparently I'm not coming across that way. So what are the, and it's, this is kind of a little bit hard, right? So how do I change how I'm coming, how I'm coming across that's really authentically me, truly me. And so it's it's different for, for everybody, but I think that exercise of looking at the words they're using to describe you and your words, your words are, you need to figure out how to, how to make those come to life, right? Mm. Um, it's that they have a perception, a perceived perception of you, and it may be because you really haven't defined, you know, how you're coming across. Your close friends are gonna know you 100% you. It's maybe those newer business associates that, um, and it takes time to have that interaction with you and to really kind of come up with those, the way that they're interacting. But it's, it, there has to be consistency in how you're showing up. That's so important, right? Number one, you be intentional with how you're showing up and have some type of strategy for that. And then being consistent in how you're showing up will help solidify those words. And you know, in my book, I See You, the last part of it, like we did intentional, consistent, and then being you, right? That's, that's really where it's at. And then bringing your values and your strengths forward. You, you've got so much experience in this space. Do you have examples of, of times where you've been working with people and they're not being themselves, they're portraying a fake personal brand, and you've got to sit them down and say, this isn't right. Yeah, um, so I did have um, one, uh, 
couple different people. Um, the one that comes to mind immediately was somebody that was in a very the very public eye and had to play second fiddle behind a mayor of a, of a city here in um, the United States. And she was not used to being <laughs> not in the spotlight, right? The mayor had to be in the spotlight and then she, we, you know, we kind of had to pull her back a little bit. And so that was a little bit of a struggle um, for her because, you know, who she is um, was very direct, very, um, very commanding, had a commanding presence, um, you know, was, could grab that mic at any time and just, just speak well and maybe um, overshadow that mayor. But we had to pull her, we had to pull her back in, a, in, a, in some ways where she didn't overshadow that mayor. And so what we did, we did a little bit of that with her clothing. So when she showed up, she was, instead of she loved wearing black, and that's a very commanding, very dramatic, um, eye-catching look, especially for her, we pulled her back into some, into some navy blue or lighter blue. So she didn't, she wasn't as commanding, um, but it still was comfortable for her. She still liked that color and we still gave her a little bit of an edge. Um, and then we just, we kind of came up with some strategies for her communication with, um, when she was maybe at a press conference with the mayor, um, you know, just kind of reinforcing what he said and not maybe having, she could have some opinion, but to tie it back to what, what he was saying versus having it all her. So those are just a couple of things that we did with her. Um, we also let her do some, um, you know, she was really good with people. And so we kind of highlighted that aspect of her when she, she's no longer there. She's gone on and done her own business, which is wonderful. Um, what, what was the outcome of that exercise of you doing that with her? Yeah, so she, um, it was super helpful for her and the mayor appreciated it. And she, that self-discovery a little bit for her was, um, was a good exercise. Um, and she still felt connected with who she was and it helped, um, her, you know, she, she knew she probably wanted to have her own business. And so it helped her gain some confidence, um, in her leadership skills. And then, so she did go out and obviously start her own consulting business. Um, and he was, you know, he was really appreciative of that. And he, but he also gave her the spotlight sometimes too, because he knew she liked that. Um, so he wasn't afraid to say, Hey, you know, what do you, you know, want to bring her up and get her opinion. So they kind of worked together as a team so that they didn't, um, you know, one didn't overpower the other, but she kind of had, I mean, it's, you think about, you know, the United States a little bit with president, vice president, whoever that is at the time, that vice president's position is to really just lift up, right, in support. Um, and so that that was a part of her that she didn't really realize that she she was really actually really good at that. So, and she wow. brings that now into her into her business. One thing that you mentioned that you did for her initially that was interesting was the the visual element. So, the 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 aesthetic was commanding, and then how do we tone that down? I imagine a lot of that is quite unconscious for people that are observing her or or, or in her presence. So, how much of the branding side of things is completely unconscious? People wouldn't realize what was taking place, but it would take someone like yourself with that expert eye to be able to spot the unconscious elements. Yeah, well, um, as humans, we're, in wire, we're wired to interpret things visually first. So, you know, we look at somebody and we instantly um, have perceptions or biases about them. And so there's little things that, that we're just kind of unaware of. So there's little things that I, you know, will talk to them about. And one of the things is color psychology. So depending on their audience for the day, the meetings that they have scheduled for that day, who are they going to be interacting with, um, and maybe um, what the message is that they want to send that day, I will have them tweak the colors that they're wearing. So because that's a subtle message that um, 
sometimes we don't think about, right? We just throw it. It's easy for everybody to throw on black and go, right? <laughs> um, but there's, there's so much power and strength and um, drama to that, <clears throat> to black. So if you're, if you have to have maybe like a really tough conversation with somebody, um, I, the, brown is a very good color because it's really down to earth. Um, it's nurturing. And so it really can help you get a message across that may be tough. Um, red is super powerful. It actually, um, you know, it's one of the colors that a lot of business people will wear like a red tie if you, if you're wearing a tie anymore these days, um, or, you know, a red blouse or whatever it is. So, or a red pocket square, something that, um, commands a little bit of attention and it's a, it's a little bit of a power play, a power look. And so there's times where we're going to incorporate that for people, but it also, you have to think there's, you know, there's positive sides of the color, but there's also some negative sides of color. So red raises your blood pressure, um, as well. So you have to be a little bit careful with that. Um, so there's, again, there's different, like yellow is the first color of the eye sees. So if you're going to a large networking event, um, if I have a client going to a large networking event, they don't know anybody in there, uh, but they want to be seen, I'll have them throw on a little bit of color. And again, if it's a man, sometimes they have a sport coat on, we'll just do a yellow pocket square. Um, it could even be a necklace on a lady, a yellow necklace, something that doesn't have to be super overpowering, but that's the first color the eye sees. So if you walk into a large room networking event and you want to be noticed, then throw in a little bit of yellow. And even if you're in a, um, zoom calls, right? If you have a screen full of, um, people on zoom and you want to stand out a little bit, then sometimes I'll have a yellow necklace on or a yellow earring or something that'll just you know, capture people's attention. Like, who is that? Like, I want to get to know that person. So there's just little, um, little tricks like that. Again, I think color is the easiest thing for people to, um, kind of to start with and to, um, help them visually. That's fascinating. Is there, um, Sheila, is there anything with pink? Because obviously you're, yeah. you're sporting pink today and you've got pink lipstick and pink earrings. So yeah. I'm, I'm keen to understand that. Right. So, well, of course we have the whole Barbie thing going on right now. <laughs> right? That's, that's my nod to Barbie a little bit. But it's very, um, it's a nurturing color, right? It's very nurturing and it's, um, there's some softness or some feminine side um, there's, um, warmth to it. There's a, you know, genuine niceness. And so, mm. yeah. And we're, and, we're matching. And, there and we blue. go, a bit of pink. Oh yeah, there you go. Um, and blue is right. A very, very trustworthy color. It's, it means loyalty, trustworthy, the deeper the color, the more it goes to, right. The lighter, mm. the color, the little bit more softness to that. Um, so if I always tell people, if I hand you a yellow crayon, what would you draw first? And most uh, yeah. people say, right, the sun. And so if you think about yellow is very cheerful, very happy, very optimistic, very, um, it's got some warmth to it. So um, sometimes that helps people. If I hand you this color, <laughs> what would you draw with it? I like it. I like it. And I, I knew I could trust you, Zach. Um, okay, interesting. And if, okay, and so one of the things that I've found, like, and I find the whole personal brand phrasing sometimes, it can make me feel a little, it can irk me because I see so much on it on LinkedIn and yeah. so many people sell it just for the sake of what, oh, we sell personal branding. What does that mean? We write your LinkedIn statuses. That's not pers speaking to you, Sheila, there's so much more to personal branding than that. Me and Zach have probably built up our personal brand around having a conversation around cold calling. So if you look at a hundred of our LinkedIn posts, I would say 98% of them are around cold calling and 2% of them are probably around gibberish and nonsense. But w with that, say, Say in three, five, ten years' time, I say, you know what? I'm moving out of this space. I want to set up a lingerie business. I don't want to cold call anymore. 
And then I go onto LinkedIn the next day and I'm not talking about cold calling, I'm talking about knickers. And everybody's like, whoa, who's this guy? How can he change? What, 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 what is the advice you'd give to somebody there when they want to gracefully adapt their personal brand as, as things change? Well, you're still bringing your same thought leadership with you, right? That never goes in your in your very strong reputation that you already built. But people do that business pivot quite often, right? So um, it's you're still bringing you to that new business, and you know you just kind of reposition your you know your positioning of it with obviously the content, right? Like, hey, I'm you know. It's a new phase in my life or, you know, I'm happy to start this, you know, new business. So you obviously you guys don't have to do that. You're right. You market it a little bit. And but you're still bringing your personal brand with you to what to wherever you go. So it's OK if you change your business model or, you know, if you go and get into a different business because you're it's still you there. Right. It's still your thought leadership like, oh, I am going to go to Jack because I know he's going to take care of me even in this new business that he's doing. So I think it doesn't like it doesn't change or go away. It's maybe the um, it's the messaging. Obviously, that's going to change a little bit, right? Your marketing messages, but it's still you. Right. It's still Jack that I trust from the other business. So I'm going to... Th- <laughs> <laughs> He's good like that. Um, so I'm going to throw out the first challenge of the podcast. Um, oh, okay. So I'm trying to think how to do this in a diplomatic way. So on LinkedIn, we will see a lot of people in the our space or in the marketing space who part of their brand is that they have a slight mental health issue so it might be like oh i've been working really hard so now i'm burnt out again for a few weeks and here's what i did to get back from this rut of burnout and then six weeks later it's another post i was working really hard and now i'm burnt out again and now i'm in this rut of burnout and then if i'm i'm thinking of this objectively as someone looking to buy their services what i know about them from their personal branding is they burn out every six weeks so yeah. my question right. to you is, where is the line between I want to show you my personal struggles as part of my personal brand, but also don't want to detract from I'm a trustworthy business person who can deliver results for you? Yeah, that, that's a really that is a really good question. And that, that one's a little harder with the mental, <laughs> the mental health area or aspect of it. So. I think you have to be, again, strategic about it because everything you do everything you say and everything you wear has consequences and it's either strengthening or building up your personal brand or it's detracting or taking away from your personal brand daily right and so you just have to be aware of that and you have to own that and you and if that's something that you want to do and you want to bring that um, to the forefront that hey you know I'm working so hard and now I burned out for a little while and if you keep putting that out there you just have to understand and know and own it that that maybe is going to turn off some people and that may be okay for you right it's it's your decision you have to decide you're going to maybe lose clients and maybe that's okay for you or you're going to lose clients and you're going you know what mm, i'm not okay with that so i'm not going to post that a ton i might do one or two posts about it but I'm not going to like be hammering it all the time. Right. So I think it's, you have to stay authentic. This is just super hard, right? You have to stay authentic to who you are. There's not a hard and fast rule. It's, it's a conversation with yourself knowing that whatever you put out there, it's either adding to your personal brand or taking away end of discussion. Right. So you, when you have to be, a little bit strategic with what you're going to post and just understand that this may have a negative connotation to it or it may turn off some people or it may lose followers which is fine it may lose customers um whatever that is you just have to own it and um, understand that and if you're okay with it then be authentic and post it but if it's something that you're like you know 
I, I want to put it out there so people know that maybe that's a struggle for me a little bit, but um, how do I make it positive, right? Like this is my lessons learned from it. This is how, what I'm doing to, um, to correct that or um, how it's helping me build better systems um, personally or in business, whatever that is. So. Hmm. I, I think there's a, a real fine line with 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 how you kind of determine it. It's it's, it's a it's a real interesting one. I, I guess when it comes to controversy as well, I, I read somewhere the other day that when you're a small business or like a small starting out solopreneur, I think that's what they're called these days. But like you're starting out, you can't afford to just go under the radar. So you have to kind of be out there. Um, and one of the ways that people find um, getting some quick traction is being a little bit controversial in, in what they say. And, uh, and I think me and Zach have found that point with our opinions on the sales world and, and stuff like that. It's probably a similar kind of answer, but I'd, I'd be keen to get your thoughts, Sheila. But when it comes to reputational damage, of like how, how far can that tr controversy go and, and how far can it last if if you do comment on the, the wrong things or you say the wrong thing out of line? But I think, so let me start with this. It's important to have a point of view and it's not even important, it's vital for everybody to have a point of view. And a lot of um, people struggle with that. Like what is my point of view on something? And it can be a little controversial and I think that's okay. Um, again, it's up to you to own that because it can turn people off. And that's fine, right? You just have to understand that that can happen. Now, I'm not a reputation um, manager or crisis manager with with because um, that happens quite. That does happen, and there are companies out there that can help people with that. But um, I think it's I think it's um, if it's part of your brand to be a little bold, a little brash, um, a little edgy, they're gonna expect that from you. If it's somebody like me that that's not my brand, I'm not super, you know, direct in your face, bold. Um, and if I come up, you know, do something controversial or have a strong point of view on something super controversial, that's going to be like, whoa, that's not even in alignment with the Sheila I know, right? I don't expect that from her. But again, if I am super, you know, super bold anyway in my comments and and everything about me is super direct then i think you can some they can get away with it a little bit but again right there's consequences <laughs> to everything um we see that with corporate brands right in the news a lot lately where they take a stance one way or the other and they lose a huge customer base but it's knowing also knowing who your um, client avatar is, right? Knowing your audience and knowing what they um, maybe can expect from you. So I maybe didn't answer it completely, but that, that's my thoughts on it, right? Have a point of view um, and is it in alignment with your personal brand, right? There's, um, you know, there's brand archetypes and you can use those 12 brand archetypes from Carl Jung to bring that even into your personal branding. It helps you um, a little bit more with, uh, you know, how you're coming across. So. so what's your personal brand, Sheila? Yeah, well, I hopefully you have figured it out <laughs> meeting with me. But so for me, what I want people to think about is are there some genuine warmth right that it's um easy easy to talk to very approachable and there's some charisma there so when i'm thinking about when i'm posting or when i'm um you know doing any of my social media memes um the photos i'm taking i want to make sure that i that things are approachable there's a little bit of charisma magnetism there um meant that those are some genuine warmth for me so does that mean that only people who want to have warm, easy to talk to, charismatic, personal brands can come to you or can someone else come to you that wants to have the complete no, opposite? Right. Other people, yeah, other people can come. 
they just that's just going to be their interaction with me right they're mm-hmm. going to know that that that's how she interacts that's how she speaks that's how she um that's her approach but um i do have clients right that are that are bold <laughs> that are really direct and um yeah, you can work with anybody, but you do have to think about like, so who you want to attract and it's, you know, as that business owner or coach or consultant, you have the uh, right, you, it's up to you to decide, do I want to work with that person? We kind of test, you know, you obviously you test people out a little bit as well, right? You get on a um, one-on-one exploratory call or a discovery call and not only are you testing right is not only is the client testing you out to see if i want to really use you for my product for the products and services whatever you sell the business owner also has to be thinking about i'm i'm testing you out a little bit i do i want to take you on as a client are you somebody that i can connect with and um and uh, really help or I want to work with or are you going to drain me? And sometimes I think coaches or consultants um, will just take anybody and then that relationship can get, you know, can get tough, it can get bad. And one of the things that was hard for me to learn, that was really hard for me to learn is like it was okay to say, no, I don't want you as a client. I'm. It's not going to be, um, it's just not going to be a good fit, of, you know, overall and um and it's okay to say that and it's and when i do say that there are people that i recommend then for them so i don't again so my kindness right a little bit of my empathy is you know what i don't know if i'm gonna be the best fit for you but i have two other people that i think that would be wonderful for you so i never leave them high and dry and just tell them hey no good good luck out there um i'm always giving them you know, some other avenues for people to work with. I don't do, I mean, it's pretty rare if I tell you no, but I have done it. <laughs> and Sheila, for, for anyone that's listening and thinking about starting a personal brand, mm-hmm. what are the three tips you'd give them that they'd have to pay you thousands of pounds for? The three tips. Well, I, I again, I think it's coming up with that those words that you want to own in the minds of others. And sometimes that's hard for us. You know, it's hard for us to see the outside label when we're inside the drawer. So sometimes you need a consultant to help you with that. So if we can get it down to one word, I can help you get it down to one word. So coming up with your one word, um, creating that signature style that, so you don't have to think about that, right? You have a lot of, Um, You have politicians that hire stylists, you have um, a lot of people that hire image consultants that can help them just show up and not even just, you know, it's even how you show up on Zoom, right? So what are you wearing on Zoom? What's your lighting like? All that. So um, coming up with your word, coming up with your signature style, and then we can talk about some thought leaderships, like how do you get, how do you get your thought leadership out there? Incredible. Sheila, I, I, I think it's been a, a fantastic conversation. If anybody's listening and they're thinking, I love that woman, she was very kind, caring and considerate, and I want to work with her, um, where can they find you? How can they get in touch? Yeah, so you can just you can go to my website, imagepowerplay.com, um, or you can reach out to me on LinkedIn, and it's Sheila A. Moore, M-O-O-R-E, Anderson on LinkedIn, but if you just go to my website, you can, there's a, you can get me from there to all of my social media. I'm very active on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank Thank you so much, Sheila.